This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Bubbles Brown is a working comedian in the San Francisco Bay Area. That means he's unemployed. And uh, <laughs> no, but you're 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 working a lot, aren't you? I'm working a little. I, in fact, uh, this weekend I'll be working with our old friend Dave Attell. So, oh wow, say hello to Dave for me. Um, Will do. Yes, I'm I, sure. Oh, uh, he did your show many times. I was. He was always a favorite of mine because he was always. You know, walking up to the abyss and looking into it, you know, uh, t- <laughs> yeah. taking chances, which. Oh, you, yeah. Yeah. I was talking to, to who was I talking to about this? I, uh, I, hmm, hmm, I can't remember who I was talking to about this to, but I, I think it was maybe even Marjorie, which I said, you know, the radio shows we did in those days, if we did them today. The Me Too stuff would come out, and they'd say, I, I, I'd either have to do profuse apologies, which I find difficult to do when I'm you know, doing a show, and I have to make an apology for something I either did or said, uh, and, and I've had to make a few in my time, but I don't like doing it, and uh, the, the peop- I don't know if that show today could get could last very long considering the kind of material we did on it oh well we'd be run out of town really i think of course i think uh, most shows back then probably would have but just things have changed and it's for the worse i think yeah, yeah. we we were having fun though we were having fun there's no question we were having fun i don't think we hurt anyone yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. So it was, a, it was a good time. It, it, yeah, it, but but nevertheless, I just think that I, I keep trying to think about what would, would we be in trouble for, and it was just that I think you know just you can pull one joke, one joke, and your whole career is ruined. Your life's over, yeah. And it shouldn't be, you know, and you should be given the ability to say, "Hey, I'm sorry," and let's get on with it. All right, I made a, I made an error in judgment. And uh, I will, I will try and do better in the future, you know. But yeah, and usually now, if you apologize, that's the final nail in your coffin. They, because they you, don't forgive that. Yeah, because no, they don't forgive uh, uh, apologies, and and that's the horrible part. Because you know, people should be allowed to say, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, I was wrong. My judgment was off." Uh, uh, I was high when I was doing my yeah. show that morning, and I didn't know what I was saying. But you know, you you have a chance of losing your job forever just because yeah. of one e- comment. Even crazy religions, restrictive religions, will at least usually forgive you for something, right? <laughs> yes, you go if you're Catholic, you go to confession, and you're Every forgiven. Times, usually, I'm you know, as long so as we you should have that for uh, entertainers that say the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I I don't understand it to be honest with you. I mean, I just it, it, but uh, but uh, you and I would probably have a harder time. I mean, do you find your you've you've changed your material a little bit? You've knocked out jokes you're not using now because yeah, they might cause uh, you a you problem. Yeah, you can't get too dark. Uh, I think uh, I had a lot of hooker jokes and I've cut most of them out because. Uh, I don't know why people would get offended at hookers, but... Well, give us one hooker joke, and let's see if we can find out what's offensive in it. Uh, my favorite part of sex is sneaking out without pain. I don't think that's offensive. I don't think that's offensive at all. No, what, it's right? do- what it's doing, <laughs> it's not pejorative against women or even hookers. It's pejorative against you. Exactly, you, yeah. You know, and most of the jokes you do are at your expense. Right? Right. I'm the victim in my jokes. <laughs> Actually, we might not even, I often said this, we might not even call you a comedian. We might call call you a 
clown. The clown. <laughs> no, this is the reason why. Um, um, Jack Benny wasn't really a comedian. He was a clown. And the difference between a, clean, uh, a comedian and a clown is a comedian pulls jokes on people. Uh, clowns have the jokes pulled on them. Yeah, that's right. Jack Benny always is always uh, the butt of every joke. He was, yeah, yeah. And and you are the butt of almost every joke you tell. Mm-hmm. I mean, you talk. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't want you to do your act here, but you have a lot of things about yourself that demean you, like like that joke you just told. Do you have another hooker yeah. line from your act? <laughs> Got to cut that hook. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other. I, 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 you know, yeah. I got a question for you here, because you you became obsessed with uh, hookers as the butt of your jokes. Okay. Yeah. What did you find so funny about hookers? And I'm going to tell you what I think it is. But what do you say? Uh, I think uh, David Feldman and I were, were just on stage. We used to do hooker songs, and uh, <laughs> we started we started laughing hysterically. Just the thought, the thought of somebody paying for sex, we just found hysterical for some reason. Yeah, well, I'm I'm I am willing to say that I think part of the thing you find funny about hookers is the word hookers. That's very funny. Yes, you know. That that's essentially what you really found funny because I mean, you you had a one one word uh, joke and it's just somebody with hookers, you know, hookers. you know, um, and that hooker comes from the uh, Civil War general, right? Who's uh, who hookers used the hookers prostitutes used to follow his troops during the war to and get they business. They were called hookers. So. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just I I just don't know why anybody would find a hooker joke uh, offensive. Okay. No, they shouldn't. That's what they call it, the the world's oldest profession. Yeah, I mean, you know, you used to say you go over to Berkeley and knock on the doors at, at brothels or at uh, massage parlors and say, "Are you open? I have cash." <laughs> See, that joke is not about the hookers. It's about you. No, it's about a pathetic man that has to pay for sex. <laughs> exactly. Here's the yeah, not a, nothing wrong with the hooker in that joke. Did you ever pay for sex? Uh, yes, first time. First time you ever had sex, you paid for it. Yes. Well, thing Ranch in Reno. Well, that gets you ready for marriage. You know. That got me. <laughs> yes. That's. Uh, where, where were you? The Mustang Ranch. Oh. Because I'm going to say that the only time I ever paid for sex was at the Mustang Ranch. And the only reason I did it is I had a friend who wanted to go there. And so he okay, went. We both went there. Wow. This, and he went there. He went in and with a hooker or something like that. And I'm sitting out there with nothing to do. And, you know, some woman comes up and says, are you interested in whatever? And I'm going, well, you know, I've never done this before, and I need this experience <laughs> no, it, in order to be able to talk about it, you know? All that I did in my life was I talked about my life and about the adventures that I have, and this is an adventure. Okay, I'll do it. And I went and I did it, and I describe it as the most non-sexual experience I've ever had. Exactly. Yeah, it's like uh, there is no sex involved. Yes, you do have an ejaculation, but there's no sex involved. No, it seemed more like a medical procedure. Than <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. So it's like when okay, I, we're done now. Uh, uh, check in with a nurse on your way out. I mean, I don't know that I don't get a bigger sexual thrill out of my urologist sticking his finger up my butt. You know, <laughs> I mean, it is the most. How do, I, how do I describe it? Clinical. Very clinical. and uh, You know, and uh, I'm the kind of guy that, hey, when I have sex with a woman, I want to know I'm having sex with her because she would like to have sex with me, that she finds me attractive enough to have sex with, right? Yeah. And, and when you're now paying a woman, you know that's not the reason she is having sex with you, and so I got no thrill out of it, you know? And and but uh, but now I can tell you that I found it a total a clinical experience. Now what about what about you when you were after you d- did this? 
Did you ever see a hooker again? Uh, no, no. So that was the only time. I, yeah, I thought uh, I just had uh, I had to get it done. I think that's why I did it the first time. You, but not, my, my question is okay. So you had to get it done. Understand that, all right? Um, but uh, was it was it uh, fun for you, or was it just I got it over with? I remember I was really glad I got it over with, but it, we, I just thought, wow, that all the talk and about sex when you're a teenager and everything, it just so I thought, wow, it's kind of disappointing. You know, one time when I was high on LSD years ago, this is back way back when, and I was up in the hills, mountains or something here in New York, staying at a friend's place, and I went in and lied, laid on the bed, and in front of me, I hallucinated the first time I ever had sex. Really? Which uh, was hard to do because I did it in a car and you couldn't fit a car in this bedroom. But anyway, I was just hallucinating on on the, the act itself, okay? And how innocent it really was. That may have been the most innocent you ever were because you didn't know what the hell you were doing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? And and I and I was amazed by what an innocent act it was rather than some kind of blatant sexual act that was horrible and so on and so forth. So, you know, our our whole uh, you know, I so I I think that may be the most innocent we've ever been was the first time we ever had sex. And I, yeah, I, I because you didn't know you didn't know what you were doing. No. You had never felt anything like this before in this exact way. And the only problem was, start, but of course, you know, a lot of fathers used to take their kids to hookers to get them laid for the first time. Uh, that was uh, supposedly a tradition up there in Reno. They'd take their kids to the Mustang Ranch. Yeah. And, and, and they felt that, you know, I'd rather have my son have sex for the first time with somebody who knows what they're doing than some girl who's her first time and she doesn't know what she's doing, you know. And she gets pregnant. So. And then she gets pregnant, exactly. But uh, Well, I will say, I thought the idea of legalized prostitution certainly is better than having it on the street with pimps beating the women and uh, have it regulated, get it taxed. Why not? Huh? Well, I mean... Uh, but I, uh, the, my first time was in my car, which was a, a Pontiac 1939. Torpedo. Tor torpedo. How do you know it was a torpedo? You, you told me you had a torpedo. Yeah, I had a torpedo. Uh, and uh, we were, I was out near where is now the M Marin Civic Center, but it had yet to be built, oddly enough. And it was out on a little side road near where my girlfriend lived, and we got in the back seat, and we did it. We thought we did it. I wasn't sure whether we did it. I thought I might have not actually penetrated. I, but, but you see, that's what you want. When you, when you <laughs> that's need, how awkward the first time. When you've know, never done it you're before. You're not sure. Yeah, you're not sure. So the following Monday, I had her come over to my house, and we consummated it for sure in a bed where we knew it was happening. You know, so that, that, that was my beginnings, folks. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. So it, you did it on the side of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's last building. Yes, well, it, well, it hadn't been built yet, you know. So. <laughs> but you know, I, I uh, uh, really, I just uh, um, it, 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 that that first time you've had sex is maybe the most innocent thing you'll ever do. Just the innocence of it just overwhelmed me when I thought about it. And yeah, uh, yeah, and I, as I say, I did. I, I, I. Uh, thought about it uh, and and uh, uh, what was it where was I on this I'm trying then to you think. get then you get older in the male sex drive and you become a, a total beast and, well uh, I wonder I wonder what a sex drive is anymore you know oh mine's totally dead oh yours is totally uh, dead and you haven't even had a prostate problem <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, I I was you know, pretty much horny up until the day they kind of beat up on really? my prostate wow. yeah and they beat they beat up on my prostate and now my doctor my my urologist said to me you know he sticks his finger up there he feels around he goes ah, yeah, it's it's very flat <laughs> this thing's supposed to be like a walnut right it's flat uh -huh. it's flat now 
And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't get sexual urges anymore. You know, it's just gone. Uh, are you sure your sexual desire has gone? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I uh, haven't thought about it in weeks. So. You have Oh, really? This is a recent occurrence. Uh, no, in the last three, four years, I would say. And uh, yeah, I know. As a man, you have uh, sexual urges or thoughts like every, isn't it like every minute or something. Uh, when you were younger, it was like every every every. I think at least every five minutes. You had a, a, some yeah, kind of sexual thought. Not, You're either walking down the street and you see a woman walking up up towards you, and you get the thought. Or the, and then you do something else. Or you rub your pants against the wall and you get the thoughts. You know. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, the only thing I like about the way I am now, I don't I don't regret to begin with. I had a lot of good years using that prostate. Okay, it it, it, uh, it gave me lots of hours of pleasure. So. Here I am at 83, and it doesn't really work anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't feel bad about it because I had a good life with it. Mm -hmm. So I can't. I, I mean, now Larry, I, I know this is a weird question to ask you because I don't know, you know, your personal life. But uh, did you have a pretty vibrant sex life? I did pretty well in the uh, 80s and 90s, yes. In the uh, 80s and 90s. You mean, I found you, that in other words, you got, you, more got, women, you got laid as a more result. More women doing your show that's than doing stand-up comedy. That, that's what I was going to say. You got laid as a result of being on radio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I, it could have been, well, in radio, you're hitting so many more people in your uh, being on stage in one club, you know? yeah, but also you would go on stage at a club and they would see you, and they, and they would see you. <laughs> and there were there were comedy groupies, you know. There were women. There were a few, yeah. yeah. They were. And and uh, uh, and Bubs had you you uh, you the women liked you a lot, you know. You really I didn't uh, realize that, but uh, didn't you? Uh, no, I I I, I realize that women had this kind of. They had this maternal love for you, like you Maybe were. Maybe I was non-threatening. No, you were somebody that needed to be mothered and taken care of, and so on. And you know, in a in a uh, in a um, uh, what do you call it? Oedipus Rex sort of way. You know? <laughs> uh, but I I, I just uh, you know I just I just wondered how active your sex life was, especially during that time, and apparently it was pretty good. You know. I think I think it was normal. I don't think I know there were some comics I know that uh, just wow, it was like a new girl every night. So. Now, tell me if I'm getting too personal. But do you have a girlfriend now? I do not. No. Oh, okay. Do you have uh, any booty call women? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Because right, you, I always had a certain amount of booty call women. Really, I had one of those. That was fun. That was good. Well, because the two time. of you are there for only one reason. Yeah, you know, and so there's no there's no emotional uh, uh, thing you're, you're going through, but uh, it, it was uh, it was pretty pretty good, I think, you know. But yeah, anyway, uh, so uh, so we pretty well examine Larry Bubbles Brown's love life, non non-existent non love life. Yeah. Well, you know, I think a lot of people got a non-existent love life as a result of COVID. I mean, think of single people during COVID. What what, what did they do? Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, that must have been a lot of guys really going crazy. You know, and they couldn't even go gay because that you know it was all the same thing. You know, I mean, it's just contact. Period. So if you couldn't get out of the house and you couldn't go to bars because the bars weren't open and you couldn't go to this and you couldn't do that, what did they do? How did you get laid? I would love to ask that question of a bunch of people who were younger during COVID, you know. To me, well, now they say that uh, there's a lot of people that just uh, younger people that have. I thought 67 percent of guys under 30 don't have a girlfriend, and there's very little sexual activity going on. And really? So I don't. I don't know if that's because of COVID or what, or things are just changing. But well, women are difficult. No, excuse me. <laughs> 
Maybe Mother Nature uh, realizes uh, we have too many people. Maybe uh, I'm sorry. I just pulled the joke that would have gotten me banned for life from radio. Yeah, that, that would. Yeah, you. <laughs> We're off the air now. You know, I'm. I, I mean, I I know the one joke I used to tell, and I've told this. On, I told this on radio that would probably get me the Me Too movement would jump on me. And, and come on, folks, you can jump on me if you want to. I got nothing to lose here, all right? And the joke was, why do women have periods? Why? Because they deserve them. <laughs> that, I always liked that one. Now, would that have gotten me in trouble back then? Not back then. Today it would be done. Really? I would be done today? I think you would... I don't know if you'd have to do an apology, but there'd be an uproar. There'd be people calling for you to be fired. Now, it depends on who your station was, whether they'd back you up or not. I never censored my comics on the show, as you know. No, that was great. Uh, but, uh, and they were all very good about living by the rules of radio and not getting me in trouble, because I'm, you know, I'm not going to be there the next day if they do something today. Uh, but... Um, I the one thing I did told comics never to do was to tell AIDS jokes, and the reason was I was watching television one night and I saw somebody with AIDS and I said that's a pretty horrible disease. What are we making jokes about it for? It's not right. it's not funny. The only reason we we're making jokes in those days about AIDS was because we perceived it to be a gay disease. And what we were doing was really making fun of gays when we told those jokes. So there was no benefit in telling an AIDS joke. And I finally one day f found something, and I came on the air with it, and, and people understood what I was saying. I found an AIDS joke that wasn't derogatory. You ready for it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what's the worst part about getting AIDS? Uh, what? Having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> there is nothing homophobic about that joke, right? <laughs> because Haitians were getting AIDS a lot. Yeah. But anyway, so that... That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do you, do you have another hooker joke that might get you in trouble today? Uh, I, I can't think of any right now, but, uh... Yeah. But you, you've just... But yeah, you... What, what, what... You have you, to be very careful about anything about... People, there's so many groups of people get upset now, it's just... Yeah. It's not just women, it's everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lenny Bruce once told, told the story about how <clears throat> NBC censored him from doing a joke about the time he got a tattoo and his um, mother, uh, his uh, grandmother said, uh, you got a tattoo, you'll never be buried in a Jewish cemetery, right? And they didn't want me to tell that joke. And uh, I went in and said, you know, it's a joke about my grandmother, okay? It's not a joke about, you know, tattoos or whatever and they said well you know it's it'd be offensive to the jewish people and he said well i'm jewish and it's not offensive <laughs> to me and they said well it's offensive to the christians and i said he said why to them and they said because you're implying they'll bury anyone <laughs> jesus I mean, but that's the kind of censorship you wind up with, you know. People with art, they want to censor something, so arbitrarily they're going to say they're going to censor you. And, well, I hate and, censorship. Well, we hate censorship because comedy is a reflection of the times. And if you can't be, you know, you're a reporter of sorts when you're a comedian. You're reporting the times we live in and, and your take on what's happening in the times we live in. And you shouldn't be impeded in doing that. You should be given a, no. a, you know, you should be able to say anything. And if somebody's offended, well, that sometimes that, that's what comedy does if it's really good. Occasionally, it's going to offend people, you know. 
And I just I find that, you know, horrible. A person like you has to sit there and say, well, what can I do in my act now that I used to be doing that I can't do now? And I, I just I just find that obnoxious and horrible. And we, you know, people come back and say, well, why don't you come back and do a show in, in uh, San Francisco? And I say, you know, we couldn't do that show today. Could not do Probably it. Probably not, no. Could not do it. Wouldn't be allowed to. Well, Larry, it's uh, time to bid another fond adieu. You do, yeah. Yes, a fond adieu uh, with you and say that we'll see you again uh, hopefully next week. You know? We will, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, his nibs, um, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Hey, Alex. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, okay, Larry Bubbles Brown, let me turn on the lights. There we go. Okay, now we're okay. Now we got the lights. All righty. Okay. Hello, everybody. Here it is on this Friday already. It's the last day of the week. It's uh, the, uh, the day that we uh, do our last show of the week, but we will try and do our best tonight. And uh, you are welcome to join us. Uh, if you are not uh, somebody who's a fake and, and wants to try and put porn on here. Although, in most cases, porn is welcome, you know, because it's, 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 it's a way of um, taking care of business. But on this program, if you do it, I didn't, then I get demonetized. And it, it, it's just, you know, go somewhere else and do it now. You're a little tired of it, aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you, gang? Okay, let me let everybody in that's ready to go here. It's a small little crowd right about now. But uh, who knows, uh, you know, uh, there's Charlie Wallace and there's uh, our good friend Mr. Nunn. And, uh, uh, and there's, of course, is, um, is Jeff. Uh, hello, guys. How are you? Hey. Yeah? Hey. Hey. How you doing? Let's see. I'm retired. What does it say? I'm retired... And this is as dressed up as I get. Okay, I agree with you. Listen, how about this? You know, with the with the with the uh, pajama pants thing we got. You know, <laughs> you know. What do you wear, Jeff, when you're at home and you aren't going out? T-shirt. T-shirt. I mean, nothing else. <laughs> Usually, well, today. A pair of shorts. A pair of sh Oh, you're in Florida. It's Seventy-five yeah. degrees. Oh yeah. yeah. Screw you. Sorry. You know, well, right now, what, what, is, what is the temperature right now? Oh, wait a minute, let me put my watch on. I I charged my watch up here. Uh, yeah, I can't go naked at his in-law's house. No, you can't? Okay. Let's see. It's 53 degrees right now in New York City. That's pretty good, huh? It's warmer there than it is here. Really? What's, the, what, in Austin. what's the temperature in Austin? 50. Five zero. Oh, wow. Really? Uh, it's 35 in Louisville. 35 in Louisville? Okay, yes. Okay, so I've got the warmest temperature right now, I guess, huh? I got 72. Oh, shut up. <laughs> just, just shut up. Uh, I got, I got, I, it's 107 degrees here in Florida now, and boy, am I getting a sunburn. What? Sunburns are hell, aren't they? Huh? Don't you remember you stayed in Florida for oh yeah what, I, three I, weeks I, yeah no three months three months in Florida what? yeah three months in Florida lasted three months in Florida and boy was I happy to get out of there I hated <laughs> Florida I hated Miami I, not Florida I won't uh, besmirch all of Florida because I didn't hang out in the rest of Florida but let's face it it is a state that elected uh, DeSantis yeah twice twice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he keeps talking about woke. Now, what exactly is woke? Is that a term he made up? I mean, come on. No Republican can tell you. No Republican. That's a dirty word they use. Well, what is it supposed to mean? Whatever you want it to mean. Oh, wait, wait, no, wait a minute. Now, they're using it to besmirch us as though being, I mean, being woke is something I might not mind being. Okay, but I'd like to know what it is before I say I'm I'm that. That's what I'm saying. They 
nobody has a definition of it. There's this video going around now that where this one woman who wrote a book about being woke, you can't even, and the one reporter asked her to define woke and she hemmed and hawed for three minutes and couldn't define it. Yeah, I mean, is being woke being liberal? I mean, what what is woke? And, uh, you know, Florida's where woke came to die, you know, as, as DeSantis says. What well, the? in my mind, woke is being aware of what's going on around you instead of being asleep. Well, that would be awake. And history. It? <laughs> being aware of history. Yeah. yeah well, but, but woke is not a word, is it? Yeah. I, well, I woke up. Yeah. That's where it comes from. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so in other words, am I to feel that, that in order to not be woke, uh, DeSantis is um, comatose. Yeah. Okay. I just I just wanted to get this cleared up, you know, because I don't understand it. it. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, hello there, Kevin. He's woke. He's woke. Hey, he's I'm definitely like... woke. I know he's woke. I just woke up. He just woke up. <laughs> see. Oh boy. So anyway, so I you know I just I just don't understand that. It doesn't make. The That's, hell is woke? I know exactly, and they keep using it's such it. A, it's such a, it's such a uh, buzzword for them right now. Well, yeah. I would be woke. Okay, that's all it is—a bu buzzword. I just might be woke if you will just define it to me. I can tell you if I'm woke or not. But you know, they the, don't even know what it they is. They don't know what it no. is. No, they just use it. No, they just use it. Yeah. So anyway, I just, you know, but, but and Florida's where woke came to die. Well, if it died, then there isn't woke anymore, is there? Yeah, right. Oh, it's asleep. Yeah. So. The whole state. Yeah, they put it to Thank sleep. Thank you for killing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd rather be woke than whatever DeSantis is, you yeah. know, because he's just a cruel and unusual person. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, you know, it, it. It just amazing to me that I lived my life long enough to see politics become cruel. You know that the, the Republicans have become so cruel in everything that they do, and indeed, and everything that it's just you know it's sad. It's really sad. I mean, I always like to have a vibrant other party. I always thought it was good for the republic. Okay, but it's good for us to be able to disagree with each other and maybe come up with better ideas and so on. But that's not what the Republican Party is anymore. There isn't a Republican. If you're a Republican, you don't have a party representing you anymore. Okay? Plain and simple. Republicans didn't used to be cruel. Eisenhower wasn't cruel. No. Eisenhower was a nice guy. You know? Uh, 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 I can't think of a lot. I mean, uh, well, Nixon was. Well, what was Nixon? Nixon was just self -serving. Nixon was just corrupt. He was yeah. just corrupt and self-serving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't cruel. No. Uh, as a matter of fact, there were, you know, there were some good things that were accomplished under Nixon's uh, regime uh, that were quite, uh, actually, quite left, would be considered leftist today. Yeah, the EPA. Yeah. Good example. Very good example. So, I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I never looked upon... Uh, about upon uh, Nixon, uh, you know why I hated Nixon? Because my father hated Nixon. You know, uh, the, uh, in fact, until I was, I think, uh, eighteen, I, I thought that Nixon's first name was that goddamn, <laughs> <laughs> or that fucking. Yeah, well, he, didn't, that he fucking, My yeah. father never used words like that around me. He never did. So how come I use them? Well, because I didn't learn that from my father, you know. But my father, I don't think my father ever cursed. I don't think he ever used, I mean, I'm sure to my mother he used them in private conversation, but when he was around his kid, he never said, oh, that fucking Nixon. Yeah. You know, it was that yeah. damn Nixon, Nixon you know. Uh, so anyway, he hated Nixon, just hated Nixon. Um, and, and people don't remember all the things that Nixon went through. I mean, he... He, you remember the, uh, remember his dog? Yeah, Checkers. You know, checkers. He had to give what was called the Checkers speech because he was uh, accused of being corrupt. I can't remember what the corruption was now. And Eisenhower was going to drop him from the ticket. 
and he went on television and gave the speech that saved his whole career. And the reason they call it the checker speech is he said, we've never taken anything from anybody. Well, except one time when we took a little puppy that somebody gave us. And we're going to keep, and we called him checkers, and we're going to keep him. You know, and that saved, for some reason, that saved his career. Eisenhower said, okay, you're all right now. You went on TV and you, you know, you convinced the American public you were okay. So he really had to go out and prove he wasn't by becoming president. So, you know. <laughs> Boy. Uh, politics in this country. Isn't it a pain in the ass? Right, Wayne? That's right. Oop. That's he's, what you call it. He's, he's, the, he's the Edward Berger of the nighttime <laughs> <Yeah>. show. <laughs> That's right. Uh, let me. Oh, here comes. That's here, right. Here comes Tony. Here comes my my pal, my pal Tony. Um, so look, uh, good news today. It looks like uh, it looks like good news for us. Bad news for our former president. It looks like he's going to be indicted. Ooh. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. You know, uh, they say that they, but now they have a problem. They don't know whether to go down and arrest him, which he would have to surrender, because otherwise it would be a fight between the FBI and the Secret Service. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know who the Secret Service has to pay allegiance to. I mean, wouldn't the FBI kind of supersede them? I would think so. You would think, would so. think so. But uh, the other question is, are they going to take him away in handcuffs? Because, you know, when you arrest somebody, you're supposed to put handcuffs on them. Oh, be perfect. Perfect. Uh, what? They are, both, they, are, they are both under the Department of Homeland Security. And I would think that if a push came to shove, the Secretary of Homeland Security would win. Oh, okay. So, uh, so both yeah. FBI and... The Secret Service, Secret Service are both under really? Homeland Security. Really? Remember when the Secret Service was part of the Treasury Department? <clears throat> Not yes. anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. That was so, part of the creation of the Department of Homeland Security as they brought all those agencies together. Yeah. So, see, what I never could understand is every time they arrest somebody, they put them in handcuffs. I don't care mm -hmm. who they are, what they're being charged with or whatever. They put them in handcuffs and they march them away. Like all of a sudden they're gonna do something horrible, right? We, uh, put the cuffs on. It's like in the movies. They always gotta throw the cuffs on. Them. Huh? Yeah, they kick their legs out when they spread them to in the movie. I them. mean, it, all they have to do if 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 uh, Trump tries to resist, you just throw him down on the ground and he'll just roll around trying to get up. <laughs> like a be a, be like a bug on his back. Exactly. Put him on his back, he's like a turtle. He can't get up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did they indict him? Did I miss something? No, uh, but it looks like next week is the week that he's, right. and that's going to be on the Stormy Daniels thing, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, but he's still standing. There's still two other things going. There's the, uh, there's the, uh, you know, stealing of documents, and then there's Georgia. Georgia. So he's he he he's got a trifecta going there, and if he's really good at what he does, he'll be arrested on all of them. You know, so. Oh, I have a wet dream about Donald Trump being perp walked with handcuffs. <laughs> that perp walk. <laughs> did, you, love this did you have that a dream as a dream one night? I see. I love love yeah, well, this. just be sure you move out of the wet spot, okay? <laughs> so, you know. You know what it is about the term woke? They they ran Antifa into the ground to where Antifa was no longer. Uh, prominent it was it was no longer viable so they came up with woke as a way of describing lefties well they couldn't come up with a term for uh they couldn't come up with a term for um antifa they couldn't come up with a definition of antifa you know this was some kind of myth you know what the definition of antifa is antifa what? means anti-fascist anti-fascist anti -fascist, but there's no organization yeah. called antifa oh. He made I'm going to start a chapter in Louisville. You want to join? Yeah, I'll join. I'll join. Uh, what do we have to do? Uh, you know, just, be, just, just send me somebody. your name. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's uh, put make an Antifa flag. Yeah. And let's have Antifa membership cards. Oh, that oh, would be cool. I know. That would be I know. Cool. You, you have to send me your membership dues of ninety nine dollars. Also, <laughs> I knew there was money involved. Well, you know, I, do you have a do you have a senior discount? 
No. <laughs> oh, fuck you then. Jeez. <laughs> we get EFT cards? Or but, EFT you know, cards I'd be a member of Antifa yeah. if you just tell me yeah. what it is and where it I'll, is. I'll send you an official membership card. How was there that? Was there an organization called Antifa? I mean, no. 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 So they made you think that exists. Now woke exists. You yeah. uh, non. QAnon. Q, well, oh, that was another one, the QAnon, yeah. No, QAnon, they actually... No, QAnons are right-wingers. The Right-wingers who believe in a certain philosophy. Yeah, no, they mm -hmm. exist. They exist. I mean, Q, Q, Q hats. Overthrow the government is their belief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they wear funny hats. Oh, did, did you guys hear that the international criminal courts have issued a warrant for Vladimir Putin's arrest? There's an all-point alert. Oh, yeah. All-points alert on that one. He's got yeah. on the lookout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> B-O-L. Now, what happens if he leaves Russia? Can they arrest him? Whatever well, country he's so. in, could. Could. They had the other leaders and brought him into the world court. Yeah, yeah. So, well, he never leaves Russia anyway. You know, I was... Hmm? Alex, when I used to talk to Shecky about Putin, we were talking one time, I was going to ask you this. Do you think he's that insulated, Putin, that they can't just take him out one of his own? Well, I mean, I'm sure it could happen, and I'm sure that people have thought about it. And I was um, wondering, do you think they're going to find him just dead, like, done in by well, his Well, you know, what happens with a lot of those Russian leaders is they get to be so dogmatic and so dictatorial that eventually if they just get, like, a, a bad cold, nobody gives them an aspirin. You know, oh. I mean, that that's what happened to Stalin. Oh, really? St yeah, yeah, Stalin suddenly, and he had a heart attack or something, I can't remember. And they all sat around and said, we better call a doctor about this. Yeah, which doctor should we call? Well, I don't know. Which which doctor is his now these days? Oh, shit, my phone's oh, dead. Oh, my, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 They couldn't find the 11 on the phone. But that's what happened with Stalin. Really? They just know. sat around waiting, and he finally died, and they went, oh, boy, we better call somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think he's dead now. Call somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what might happen to Putin. I mean, he might suddenly, you know, he's not well to begin with. That might be what happens to Trump. What? That might be what happens to Trump. Oh, Well. One too many KFCs. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that's. There's a good chance that, that Trump will die before he's 80. I'd just get him one of them double down sandwiches. He'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll get the heart going again. Hey. <laughs> yeah, right. Load them up with Yeah, the, the only the only sandwich that pounds on your chest. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> get you going. Oh, in fact, yeah. when Trump, Stalin you got Trump locked up, you put him in you put him in uh, in a cell with a liberal. They tried to revive Stalin with a big boy, you know. So mm -hmm. I mean, Trump had suicide. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's what absurd. you need, Donald. You need to have a lot more grease in your food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People all bucking and things in there. Yeah. That may kill me. No, you'll be all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, the man's insane. He yeah. is bizarre. He is bizarre, really. And he and he wants to abolish the FBI, and the what is it? The um, uh, uh, suspend the articles of the con uh, Constitution. Oh yeah, that. That too. All the things that would allow him to maintain power, you know. You know, I did look up his uh, speech, I guess it was from last week mm -hmm. in Iowa, and I watched it for, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, just mm -hmm. for entertainment. Yeah. It's the same, same crap. I can't believe that he can still repeat the same crap. Over and over again, and people sit there, and well, obviously not as many people, they never went to a crowd shot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he kept doing the, oh, there's so many people out there. I look at all those people and all those people outside. I feel bad for him standing out there, but they never went to a crowd shot. But he does the same crap the whole time. Well, even at, I think at CPAC, wasn't it kind of half empty yeah, did, or something? And I, I flipped over to that, too, a little later, and he was doing the exact same show. Yeah. Literally show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got it down. Well, no, what he, what he believes in, I think, is is an old theory called the big lie, that if you say something enough times, people will believe it. It becomes... Yeah, gaslighting, yeah. 
Well, is that gas? No, gaslighting. No, gaslighting is it gas. over and over and over again no, until no. they believe it. Well, no, it's a or term. they decide not to argue it. The term gaslighting. Let me. That's a term I think that's being misused these days. Uh, that, yeah, it could be. Well, it, it's being overused. Gaslighting refers to the movie with Ingrid Bergman and yeah. Charles Boyer, I think, called uh, called Gaslight. And it was about a husband who's trying to drive his wife crazy by making right. her believe certain things. But that isn't what gaslighting is referring to today. They've just taken that and they've kind of made it into their own, but it, that that's not what I know of as gaslighting. Plus, if everybody was gaslit, looked as good as Ingrid Bergman, man, I just, you know, I, yeah, wet, you talk keep about feeding talk, the fire, talk, it's going to continue to mm, burn. Talk about, wet, talk about wet spots, you know, oh, yeah. Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> She was. The, she she was turns. A, she turns my. She turns my court. Yeah. Well, I when I was a kid, man, when I was growing up, I loved her. I especially loved her in, uh, um, what was it? Uh, the uh, what was the one that takes place in Spain? Um, Hemingway. St story. Oh, Carol Thompson. Uh, no, the, for whom the bell tolls. Oh. She looked so great because they invented a thing called non makeup makeup. In other words, she didn't look like she was wearing makeup, and she just was radiant. She gave me a bit of an erection. Yes, yes, yeah, she was terrific. And, you know, of course, we loved her in, you know, uh, <clears throat> Malt what, is, what was it, Casablanca? Casablanca. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she, uh, she died kind of young, I think. I mean, she was older, but she was young for, for dying. But anyway, so that's it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. You still at it. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. So what else is happening in the news? Uh, uh, oh, I just saw out in California, Gavin Newsom, great idea. He wants to take San Quentin and change it into an educational and rehabilita uh, re uh, rehabilitation center. Rather than making it a prison like it currently is, turn it into something that's more effective in returning these people to society. Not a bad idea. I thought it was a museum. What, San Quentin? Nah, it's a state prison. Oh, no, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the rock. Def, Def oh, you're, thinking, yeah. you're thinking of Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Yeah. Yeah. Alcatraz. yeah. That uh, that uh, that's a fascinating place, by the way. If you ever yeah. get a chance to go out Where to San Francisco. Have you, have you ever been out there, Kevin? Go to Alcatraz? You know, we've gone to go a couple of times and the weather was bad, but I have yet to go there. Yeah. Really? I, well, you know, when I was growing up, that little rock was sitting out there. For, at one point, it was, when I was growing up, it was still a prison. Yeah. And then they decommissioned it. And I kept, always looked at that thing out there. And I went, I wonder what it's like out there. And yeah. it wasn't until I came back to California from New York and got my job at the uh, KMEL that I said, hey, I'm going to get on the boat and go out there. And I went out there. And it's fascinating. Oh, it, uh, that's what I've heard. You know, I heard that it's really, it's effective just going out there. And and I, I remember when the Indians took it over and I'd sit on the shore and watch over there and say if I could see them and what they're doing out there, you know, making all that stir up there. My yeah, father... Was, my father, I've always wanted to. I will go out there eventually. My father, when he was a young man, was a long-distance swimmer. And he used to go and swim out and around Alcatraz and then come back yeah. in. Yeah. I thought it was supposed to be you couldn't break out because but, you but, could never survive the swim. Well, you, to the you, because you can't if you're leaving Alcatraz. But if you're swimming around it, you're swimming yeah. around the rough part of it. So There's a lot of sharks out there. Yeah, and it depends on the tide and everything else. If the tide's going in or out, then you're screwed. If you catch it when it's just, you know, yeah. in between tides, you're probably okay. It's a very cruel prison, by the way. It is. And, it's cold. And, and what's also amazing about it? How many people do you think were on San Quentin? At any, you know, prisoners at any one time? I mean Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Excuse me. Couple hundred. Yeah, you're close. Three hundred. Three hundred. Oh, yeah. Okay. And. Um, who has been the main people that have restored Alcatraz? What's that? Who are the main people who have restored Alcatraz? A lot of it's been restored. Movie makers? That's right. You oh, got it. Wow, yes. When, uh, what's his name, made uh, Escape from Alcatraz? 
Mm -hmm. uh, he came in and he took what they call Times Square, which is the main uh, uh, cell cell block. It's just a, a row of cells. There's several rows of cells, but it's called mm -hmm. it's called Times Square. And uh, they uh, he just repainted all the cells and everything. And just when I got there, the place was looking pretty spiffy, you know. One of the uh, Dirty Harry movies was partly shot. The end of it was shot there. No, it wasn't. No. No, you're thinking of uh, Escape from Alcatraz or whatever that picture was. No, it, that um, was a Dirty Harry no. movie. The one they had time a Dirty Harry movie. No. They no. shoot a guy, he gets up, one of the bad guys gets yeah. up in one of the old guard towers, and they shoot a missile into it. No, that's that was, uh, oh, what was that film? That, that was the one with Sean Connery, you're thinking of. Look, Dirty Harry uh, never uh, took uh, place on Alcatraz. Okay. Never took place it's on Alcatraz. It's called The Enforcer. Yep. Look it up. Yeah. Yep, look it up. Yeah. Well, look it up, The Enforcer. It might be The Enforcer, but it wasn't Dirty <laughs> Harry. I know Dirty yeah. Harry. Dirty yeah. Harry yeah. ends in... Time, Time Daly was in it, because I remember her from, uh, from Kevin yeah. and Lacey. I mean, that... Uh, Dirty Harry ends in, uh, in Marin County. There are four that was the movie there six. Are four of them. Yeah. Dirty Harry There's was the Dirty Harry, the Enforcer. Yeah, well, Dirty Harry was the, Magnum Force, was the first movie. Was the first movie. And Magnum, Magnum Force. Magnum That's Force, it. I think, was the second one. Yeah. And but and and uh my friend uh, uh, uh Steve Kravitz was in, I believe, either the third one or the fourth one called Sudden Impact. Yeah, that was another one, Sudden yeah. Impact. That's another yeah. one. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, no, no, the first Dirty Harry took place, uh, I think, He's Our Stadium was one of the yeah, scenes there. Francisco. Yeah, that was in San Francisco. And then out in Marin County, they, they, there was a, uh, you go out to where, oh, God, I don't know how to explain the road that you go up. It's one that goes to San Quentin, mm -hmm. okay? And it used to have an overpass, and there was an overpass there that he jumped from the top of onto the bus or whatever, and, you know. Uh, and then this big giant smokestack chimney that was out there. I don't know if it's still there. When I was uh, a bit younger, I used to go out there because that chimney had been, it was a former brick kiln. And uh, I used to go out there to eat dinner because they had taken the brick kiln and made it into a very nice restaurant. And I always liked that also because I said, well, this is where they fin Dirty Harry's last scene takes place at that, that kiln. Yeah. yeah. What? Turn on your mic if you're going to say I'm something. Muted. Sorry, I turned it off to ask Surrey. Yeah, The Enforcer, 1976. Well, that is not and Dirty Harry. Sure yeah. it is. No, it yeah, isn't. It is. Dirty yeah, Harry, yeah. it's, no. Dirty Harry was the first film. Yeah, except where they called all he, four of them. The Dirty Harry character. He played Dirty okay. Harry. Uh, yes, but oh. you said the you said the movie Dirty Harry. And then I well. then I said there's four of them. No, there's anyway. not four movies named Dirty Harry. There's only no, one there named only Dirty one. Harry, but there are five films I think total that had Dirty Harry as a character. Right, and yeah. one of them was ended at Alcatraz. That isn't what you said. You said Dirty Harry ended it. Oh, am I going to? Well, I don't know. Charlie and Do I. Do I really have to argue movie. with you about this? <laughs> no. no, you're right. I'm wrong. Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you admitted it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Moving right along. Moving right along. Yeah. So. I, I think that Alcatraz is actually a federal p prison. Alcatraz. Part of the Federal Bureau. Oh, no, it was, it was part of the, no, it is now a part of the National uh, Park Service. I, I know what it is now. Yeah. But I think it was a federal yeah, prison. Yeah, it was, not a, not a, it was a federal prison. Versus like Stan Quentin as a state prison. What it was, it's where Hoover sent people he really hated. Yeah. Because it was maybe the most disgusting prison you could be put in. Because you would go out there, I was told by people who had experienced it firsthand as a, as a, uh, uh, a prisoner, that you would sit out there on a nice warm night in San Francisco with the chill going, it's always cold at Alcatraz, right? And the thing that drove you crazy is you would sit there and be able to smell the chocolate mm. coming from the chocolate factory on the shore. And they said that was just, that was pure torture, that. 
because that reminds me. By you, now, you could smell the restaurants too. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Sure yeah. By now, yeah, but uh, uh, it was uh, it was not a, and you couldn't talk to each other. Nobody could talk to anybody else. You had to be quiet. You couldn't talk, <coughs> and it was just a really horrible, strict prison. And Hoover sent people he hated there. You know, that was his uh, his little. Uh, uh, what can we mm. call it? Siberia, you know, if you want it. So is there anything else in the news? There's nothing else in the news, is there? Uh, no spy balloons Lance this Reddick week. Died. What? Lance Reddick died Did from now, The Wire. I, oh, yeah. I was, I, you know, I never have watched The Wire, and I'm told I really wow. should. It's a good show. I watched the first Yeah, show. it was excellent. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 you know, I've never, I never watched the show. I ne there's a couple of things I've never seen. You know, what I've never seen. Uh, mm -hmm. These, these are my films that I've never seen. Uh, like Shecky used to say, you know, he had never seen Casablanca, and he died without having seen Ca Casablanca. Wow, really? Uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, Psycho. I, I know he told Psycho. me he was Psycho. Psycho. Oh God, I'm out of it tonight again. Um, Psycho, uh, but my movie is Glen Gary, Glen Ross, and everybody goes, "You've never seen Glen Gary, Glen Ross?" And I go, "No, it's no, no." It was okay. No, and I never miss an Alec Baldwin movie, you know. So, but I mean, um, so are there there are films I haven't seen. That's that's the one that I can say I have not seen, and I, it's right here. I have a copy of it. I've never watched it. I've never <laughs> I, I watched. I, I think one of the best Al Baldwin movies was The Hunt for Red October. Mm, that was okay. So oh, that was a good movie, yeah. I think it was. Be I, I think I think it was Beetlejuice. Oh, that <laughs> was good. Yeah, I liked Tim <laughs> Burton. That was funny. That, that was a good movie. movie. I like that. I like Tim Burton. Yeah. You know what was good too with him? What was that movie where he was the superhero? With was it The Shadow, Alex? I remember seeing that in the theater. Yeah, he was in The Shadow. I thought he was good in that one. I liked it. I thought it was good. Uh, it was not a bad movie, actually. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I thought he would kill the movie, and I liked it. I yeah. was like, wow, he's pretty good. Yeah, I've seen I've seen uh, The Shadow, ladies and gentlemen, and I haven't seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Okay, what kind of an asshole am I? Yeah. So, but, uh, I mean... I, I, Anybody here have a movie they haven't seen that everybody tells you what? You haven't seen that? I didn't see Gone with the Wind. My mother used to always tell me to watch it. She loved you it. You never saw Gone with the Wind? No, my mother always Well, by all it. means, if you get the chance and you've got the time, miss yeah. it. <laughs> it was, was it any good, Alex? Or no? I think that Gone with the Wind really yeah. sucked. Oh, she loved the movie. I mean, was that the movie where he says, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn? It, well, you know, it, the reason it was so lauded and made a big deal yeah. out of is because of all the publicity surrounding its release. Oh, who's going to play Scarlett O'Hara and who's going to play yeah. Rhett Butler? And So by the time the movie came out, everybody just flooded into the theaters because the publicity behind it was great. But if you that ever, if you decades, ever, it was the most profitable movie. Oh yeah, yeah. And then you see it and you go, you know, it's really very corny. It's a bad, you know, bodice ripper. You <laughs> know, they used to call yeah. those those books, you know, where they had the covers with the woman and the guy, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and they called them bodice rippers, and that's a bodice ripper. Okay. It's really, and the yeah. first half of it. Is yeah. kind of not bad because it's it's history, okay? okay. And the second half is the worst soap opera I've ever seen. That's probably why she liked it. And it was almost four hours. I remember she used to sit there and watch it, sit and watch with me. I used to get, I used to, I couldn't do it. It's not. It's four hours. This movie. I don't know if it was four hours. I think it's about three forty something like that. It was long. She used to sit on that couch and like, what does this fucking thing end? <laughs> Yes. Oh, no, it, it, well, it, if, if, the, if the second half were as good as the first half, I'd say not a bad picture. But the second half is just pure soap opera. You know. That's why she probably liked I'll it never be you. hungry again. And I got to tell you, when I see that, I cry. But I, it still sucks. <laughs> it stinks. You know, but the music swells. It, yeah. uh, I, was, I asked Marvin Hamlish once, I said, 
Are there certain notes when you when you're doing movie score? There's certain notes you can hit that like will make people cry. He said absolutely, and I think he named it like F major or something like that. <laughs> he said no, you 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 hit that that chord in your music, and it, it's in the way we were, which he wrote. He said yeah. it's in the way we were, um, and so I watch uh, I watch Gone with the Wind. And I know it's a terrible movie, and I know I hate the movie. And then she goes, I'll never be hungry again. And they got the whole terror in the background and the tree and the whole thing. And the music swells up and I'm in tears. Oh, gee, I, you know, I'm a sucker. Yeah. I'm a sucker for it. And I know it, the movie sucks. It's got a good, I'm looking at the cast. Wow, it's got some cast. What do you mean? Uh, yeah. Nobody knew who where they were when they made the movie. Now they were popular. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking now like, what, Clock Gable, Vivian Lee, Leslie Howard? Yeah. yeah, but listen to the racist that you I are. You, you don't man. mention oh, Hattie right. McDaniel. Yeah. Well, I didn't see the whole thing, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Hattie McDaniel. She's the first female black woman, black person to ever win an Academy Award. Wow. Yeah. Right. yeah, and they wouldn't even let her sit uh, with everybody else. She had to sit on the edge of the uh, the periphery of the, uh, in those days, well, I think they did it in a... Black people weren't supposed to be in that room. But then she was supposed to come because she was nominated, but they didn't seat her with everybody else. It was it was a, like a dinner they did in those days. And uh, she wasn't allowed to sit with everybody else. She, and it took her forever to get to the stage. Uh, but uh, she was the first woman ever to win an Academy of Black person to win an Academy Award. Who was the second? Anybody know? Sidney Poitier. No. Oh, oh, that's, not a, that's not a woman. No, he said person. Oh, was Black that, person. Oh, Alex, I think I knew oh, who I thought was. he said woman. Sorry. Was it, uh, what's her name? That's the movie with Billy Bob Thornton, I think. Nope. No, that was after Sidney Poitier. It, it, but this is kind of a sucker's question, actually. It was a guy mm -hmm. who played Uncle Remus. He got a, a special Academy Award for that performance. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he was the second black person to win an award, but it had to be a special award, you know. Yeah. And and then uh, you're right. The, after that, we had Halle Berry, I think. Yeah, I was doing. Yeah, Halle Berry. Yeah. Well, Sidney Poitier yeah. was before Halle Berry. Well, no, but I'm saying. Oh, I'm. I was thinking female. Yeah, you're right. Sidney Poitier. Yeah. So she's coming to dinner, right? I think. Because so believe me, we partied when Sidney won the. The whole city of Chicago is out there dancing. I'm still trying to figure out whether Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was actually a good movie. My mother, I you know, like, it certainly like was it. one liberals would love, you know. Yeah. But I mean, um, uh, the whole idea about the the you know the daughter yeah, coming back with her with her what? He won for Lilies of the Field, didn't he? He won for Lilies of the Field. Yeah. yeah. He didn't win also though for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, did he? No. I think he was nominated. But you know, but didn't he win for In the Heat of the Night? Well, that was another good one. He won too. I, mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I remember he well, was wait in a minute, Hold on a second. Echo, <laughs> how many Academy Awards did Sidney Poitier win? Sidney Poitier has won one Oscar out of the two nominations he has received. Echo, I what were the two nominations for Sidney Poitier for the Oscar? From EmmanuelD.com. Sidney Poitier had received two Best Actor Oscar oh. nominations in okay. 1958 for The Defiant Ones the Defiant and in 1963 mm. for Lilies of the Field. And then Lilies of the Field, which he won the you Oscar for. Answer. No, I don't want, I don't want, no, forget it, Echo, go away. Don't leave me alone. <laughs> um, you just say, Echo, shut up. Yeah, but the thing is, it's gotten very, very uh, pushy, uh, Echo, <laughs> which you... Uh, it, it, uh, uh, Alexa has gotten very pushy because when you ask them a question like that and then they answer it and then they go, would you like to buy anything from Amazon? Oh, that, <laughs> you know, know. I mean, <laughs> they're always pushing. It's always coming up on my thing. Here's stuff you ordered three years yeah, ago. Would you yeah, like to yeah. order another one? Yeah, but you want to order it again? Well, <laughs> you, want, you want to hear an interesting Amazon story? Uh, yeah. Is there such a thing? <laughs> well, you, you know, I, you know, I work, I work, uh, I volunteer for Habitat, right? And I lead the electrical group building houses. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I came across a, a different way to do some of the work that I did, and it involved a sealing washer. It's basically a metal washer that has a rubber gasket around the inside, mm -hmm. and it's used it's used to seal two boxes together to keep the water out. Mm -hmm. Not a single electrical distributor in my city carries that sealing washer, but you can buy them on Amazon. Really? But you got to yeah. buy 30 of them at a oh, time. By the, by the way, no, you <laughs> don't. Just, no, you uh, don't. They come two to a package, and you can buy one package at a time. Hold on a second. I got to do something here. It says here Marjorie Miller is trying to call us. Uh, oh, I, oh, I just want to see. I want just let, yeah. let me go out. I just uh, take me a second. I just want to see if she's awake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had that same thing happen with uh, some self tapping RV screws. You know the ones that have the nut, the square head, and Phillips head. Yeah. Couldn't find them anywhere in town. Okay. Got them on okay. Amazon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then again, I waited three days for them. They finally showed up and they were wrong. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's not her. <laughs> so well, whoever's signing in to to as find Marjorie that out, right? Miller can go screw <clears throat> themselves. So she's not laying in bed naked doing something nasty to call it. <laughs> right, right. Well, all I had to do was go in there and see if the light was on, you know. And I, I said quietly, Marjorie, are you awake? And uh, no answer. Mm -hmm. You, know. you, you should have just gone in there and said, where's the camera? Is it under the bed? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, so, you know, moron, you uh, you uh, really, uh, you really, you, you're, you're just barking up the wrong tree here. What is that? But I just wanted to make sure just to, you know, so she doesn't dog me all day tomorrow. You didn't want me on your show, you know. <laughs> but she never, I don't think she's ever called this nighttime show. She used to be on it. Yeah, she would stay up Friday, late night. on Friday nights. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Would, she would stay up late enough to do the show, and mm -hmm. uh, now she can't even get make it past nine thirty. So you know, um, that's ridiculous. So um, we just got rid of Marjorie. Anyway, we're uh, so uh, you know when we're talking about uh, movies and Academy Awards, as I said, I was really sorry that All Quiet on the Western Front didn't win this year. For one big reason, it was a good movie. It was a really terrific movie. Certainly better than everything, everybody, everywhere, once in time, whatever that thing is called. <laughs> I um, uh, but but uh, uh, also because it won the Academy Award for Best Picture in 1930. Well, that would have been so it would have been fun. It would be, you know, I always love it when it becomes trivia questions. You know, yeah. like, can you name a movie that was made and then remade and both won an Academy Award? Da, 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 da. Once you're nominated in one year, is that it? Or can they be nominated again next year? No. 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 Just this year. It has to be within a certain a calendar year. Um, and Edward Berger is entering the waiting room. Boy, oh, this person, no. oh, this person oh, oh, is oh. trying every name uh -oh. they can see on oh, our Monday <laughs> show. Uh-oh. <laughs> You want to blank us out, Alex, and see if that's really? Oh that's no! It. Believe me, it, it, it's not it. It's not Edward Berger. Uh, you know, I, I found this guy who kept calling the other night. I actually answered the call, um, the call of the guy, and um, after the show was over, and it was that guy is moron who keeps trying to call the show who has nothing to say, nothing to do, doesn't know why the show exists, what the, you know, what the camaraderie is here and all of that, right? And uh, let me see here. So uh, uh, this is probably partially that guy. Okay, so let me go remove uh, Edward Berger and remove Axel Hari. Wow, Ask Axel Hari. Uh, yeah, well, you know. And if they call again, I'm not going to do anything. I just leave them in there. Don't don't even try to call. You're not going to get in. Okay, so don't waste my time. Um, Marker than the average bear. Yeah, but uh, anyway. So I mean, I love I love little trivia questions like that. In movies like you know what what movie was the what what was the only picture and its sequel to win Academy Awards? Really, really. Oh. Hmm. 
That'd be the Godfather. He, he, good, very good. The Godfather yes, and Godfather, Godfather. Two. Ah. Yeah. yeah, they both won Academy Awards for Best Picture. Uh, you know, a little trivia question. Your gabnet like bucks are on the way, Tony. Uh huh. <laughs> I'll take coffee, Alex. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, listen. No. Y'all think Tony's an idiot, but he's he, he, he and you're right in your thought thinking, but he's really not in certain areas. I don't know. I don't think. Hey, he idiot. knows more about comic books than ever or any of us will ever know in our lifetime. Yeah, I think Tony was amazed when I used to be like enamored. Like he would say something that I'd be like, I, I, I would think about that. I'm exactly like that. When you have me pegged out, if you give me some, I will sit there and read it and like. I used to love research and things. I just well, you're, but you're you're a savant. There's an area of expertise you it, have. You write about you that I never realized, and then I just like to study up on things. And you know what I found that was kind of interesting is that I, in my lifetime, uh, I I was doing an interview once uh, mm -hmm. with a guy about the old West. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I know about the old West? So far as I thought. Well, maybe Zero, know. but this guy I had on had wrote a book about uh, gang, uh, what do you call it? criminals, bad guys mm -hmm. in the West, right? And we start. He starts talking to me, and he starts telling me about people, and then I start saying, "Well, what about so and so? And what about so and so? And didn't so and so do this? And blah blah blah?" And he goes, "Where do you know all this stuff from?" <laughs> and I'll see. I said, "Damned if I know." It it's just yeah. like as you go through life, there are certain things that you glom onto your brain because somehow there is an interest you have there for them. But you yeah, didn't right. make it a hobby. It didn't make it a specialty or anything else. Just every time an Old West fact would come in my path, it would stick in my brain. Yeah, something that interests you. are right. Something that I used to get bored in school. You could do well, but then it's like, I lost, you would lose interest. Like you would just feel like it's just, oh, you got to memorize this and then shoot out an answer. But you lost, like it, sometimes you, you well, start. Well, I, think, I think you hit it right about what I hated most about school was the fact that it was a process of simply learning a bunch of facts. Yeah. And then having to spout them back correctly. And if you do that, you graduate. But it doesn't mean that you got the right information. Yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of wrong information in my lifetime, especially in the early years when I was in grade school, and in high school, I was given facts that were absolutely today you would be appalled. You know, I was going to ask you this, and the guys too you, as a group. Funny you said that. I was me and my brother were talking over dinner, and I said the rise of Trump. You know what I I remember right, saying this to one of my English teachers in school. You know what people lack, and I don't want to sound condescending or like I'm a smarty fans, critical thinking. How to feed through the bullshit. You can't learn that from a, from a book. No, no. You know? You know, uh, yeah. I mean, I know more about, I, uh, most of my education didn't come from, from schools. You you, is that make any sense, Alex, where you can say, like, you could tell me, you know, Tony, that guy's just bullshit. Yeah. Like a critical thinking where you can say, you can't learn that from a history book. It's the difference between street smart and book smart. Yep. Well, you can learn things. You can learn things from uh, uh, on history from a book and so on and so forth. But it's also a question of what books you're asked to read. Right. That's true too. Yeah. You know, I I, I wouldn't want a doctor that never went to medical school. Well, that's, <laughs> that's true. Too. That's why we don't pay attention to your medical advice. I'm taking advice from Phil Allen. Going to I, the don't claim, I don't I'm claim to, to be a doctor. <laughs> you just play one on a talk show. Yeah. No, I, I just, I'm knowledgeable in a lot of stuff with it. But well, well, he is knowledgeable a little bit, right? He admit, Alex admits it. Yeah, you know, uh, months ago, he asked me to stop talking about medical stuff. And the very next show, you, Alex, asked me a medical question. Really? It was cute. It was cute. Well, call me a hypocrite, okay? Uh, yeah, you're a hypocrite. There yeah. you go. Don't, don't call me a hypocrite. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, um, by the way, uh, it's been three. It's my three-week anniversary. Oh, Charlie Chaplin's trying to call. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's going to be uh, All right. Listen, uh, uh, I got... Uh, Oh, was it, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. It's, it's three-week anniversary. Three, three-week anniversary. Since I went to the doctor for my blood tests, and he hasn't gotten back to me. Then you're fine. That's my brother. They did the doctor never got back to me. That means you're fine. 
does that mean I'm fine? Either that yeah, or I'm going to die brother because call. he forgot to call me back. <laughs> Unless the paperwork is in something else. I like <laughs> but every, everybody says to me, you should call the doctor. And I'm thinking, no. isn't his job to call me? Yeah. Maybe he called and left a message on the wrong number. God. <laughs> I'm sure if he, I didn't call him back after a while, he would call back. I mean, if I were a doctor, I would pay attention to this sort of stuff. Yeah. And most doctors I've had either will send me all the tests and just make little notations on each of the tests of what he thought, or he will call me and just tell me, hey, everything's fine. My urologist the next morning always emails me and says, another year, you know, you... Uh, you, you didn't have any, any cancer this year, you know, uh, and no detectable. Uh, and that's terrific, you know, it's wonderful. Yeah. But he does it immediately the next morning. So I don't know what happened with this guy. But I, 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 I guess you're right. Who, who said that, uh, you know, if you don't hear from him, probably. My brother said, dude, he, he doesn't call his doctor back. If Ruben doesn't call him, yeah. he says his because he always said to him, we use oh. the same thing. We would call you if there was something. Wait, 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 same, Vernon? My primary care physician is a member of a group, and they use electronic medical records. So if there's a test run or anything like that, I get a I get an email notification that the test results are in, and I can log into that website and look at the test results myself. Kaiser does the same and thing. Try and figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine, my two of the tests that he did went through Quest, and I got a notification from Quest, your test has been completed. You can go online and see the results. I saw the results, and it was fine. There were nothing wrong with them. Uh, uh, but that was it. That's all, you know, if he did them through Quest, they, they didn't do any more. You know, I, it, it's weird. It's just weird. Uh, but th th these were the people who jabbed me three times and weren't able to get blood out of me, okay? <laughs> and if you're called the cancer and blood specialist shouldn't you really know how to draw blood and get it the you first time yeah hell you everybody so. comes in you're sticking the needle in there and you're drawing out some blood and now another person comes in and you're drawing out some blood and even if you're new to it after about the fifth person i think you pretty much know how to draw blood well i didn't how about no. how about injecting you with a dye i had an mri yeah and they're supposed to inject you with a, a dye mm -hmm. uh, for the MRI. You probably have had. Oh, these. yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> it's they really, missed it's, the vein the first time, and it burned like crazy. Yeah. And then the nurse missed it the second time. And I said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm going to give you one more chance. And the doctor came over, and he said, let me try it. Got it the third time. That's the stuff that feels warm when it goes in your body. No, no, no. That, yeah. That's iodine. This is. With it, with it, with an MRI, they use a different oh. contrast. I won't do. I won't do an MRI, because I, I, I have, I have literally claustrophobic. Oh, bad, big time. Just big ask time. for open MRI. Well, I don't even want an MRI. Give me a CT okay. scan. You, most of the things you can find out, you can find out using a CT. So you can't see the brain operating. You can't see the heart operating like they can with an MRI. Okay, but so my there, heart isn't a problem and my brain isn't a problem, so do the CT scan. You know? Okay, there you go. You know, there are certain things that CT is better for than MRIs. You know? Absolutely. Right. And vice versa. Yeah. So everybody but one is hung up. We were up to four people here with phony names, including Fine, Charlie Chaplin, who... Really, if it is really Charlie Chaplin coming back from the dead, I've probably missed a very big opportunity. Yeah, really. It would put this show on the map. <laughs> so, anyway. We have all kinds of views after the fact. Y yes, uh -huh. right, right. Yes, Jeff. So, a few, a few minutes. Um, we're all thinking about all these different countries that are killing each other. Yeah. Is it, has anybody found out about what's going on in it? In France, uh, Macron has a problem now, yeah. because there is a. I'm trying to remember the reason they're all protesting. Oh yeah, yeah. He wants to raise the age for getting what essentially is their social security. Mm. Are you ready for this, people? Just uh, hold on to your seats. Or to sixty-four. Like yeah, we're, we're already yeah. up to sixty-six here in this country. You know. Yeah, it's 62 now, and he wants 62. to raise it to 64. They want to lynch Apparently Macron that. over this thing. They had thing. like 70,000 people out there. 
Yeah, we know it was gigantic, and they were screaming, bur- you know, burning him in effigy, and they want to kill him, and they, you know, we're, we're never going to vote for you again. And uh, the fact is, come to America. <laughs> Chances are you're not going to get Social Security before you're dead. Right. You know. Right. Uh, no, here now it's sixty five and uh, sixty six. I think every year it goes up. I think sixty six and a half. It's still sixty two. Well, sixty two the low end if you want to cash I, I, in early. You if you want to get the maximum, it's like 68 or something like that. Yeah, it was 67 when I applied. 67, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Because I, I did it at 62, and because I kept working, I kept making enough money that I really, I get a pretty good check anyway, you know, so. Uh, but, uh, it, but they, I did yeah. 62 because of disability, but yeah. then the, the Medicare and everything else kicked in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, uh, I, I just, when I saw that tonight, I went, uh, the French complain about everything. You know, I mean, they got it good. Even at, at uh, 64, they got it good compared to us. You know, so, yeah, uh, what have you. Bullshit. Huh? Yeah, yes, right. <laughs> oh, Mared. Will I be demonetized for saying Mared? Why? I wonder. I wonder if you swear in foreign languages, if I could get demonetized. They, you know, they've been demonetizing me every day, and really? I mm-hmm. some days oh, God, not a single, not. not a single four-letter word is said, and they demonetize me, and then <laughs> I have to protest it, and then they go, "Oh, we just looked at it. You're okay." <laughs> well, you know, it's a pain in the yeah. ass every day having to having to do that. So let me get my money's worth. Nah, I won't say it. I, I was going to just curse up a storm. They're testing you. Know, that, or I could just that, let... That, tw- that, huh? that $20 comes in handy every once in a while, doesn't it? The $20, yeah. Actually, yeah. I I made, I think last year, I made almost $300. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, if any of you want some of it, I'll be happy to send it out because you helped to earn it. You know. <laughs> Is it based on the number of people you have on the show? No. No. It's based on the number of people who watch. Wow. If you can get a million people to watch, you'll get $4,000 from YouTube. All right. So when you see that somebody has like 50 million views yeah. to a particular video, if, it, if it's able to be monetized, it doesn't have any copyright infringement on it, uh, they're making a, you know, wow. a, a lot of money. A lot like of money. that little Ukrainian violinist. She's she, making money. She is kicking ass. Do you know how much she makes a year? How much she makes a month, rather? $5,000, they said. Oh. She has made, she is now worth $5 million. Wow. This little Ukrainian kid violinist. I mean, she's terrific. She is very good. She's very good. And uh, she's, uh, she was, uh, you know, she's, um, um, she's very, gotten to be a very rich kid. She's from Ukraine. Family came here from Ukraine. And she's even been doing some benefits to benefit Ukraine, playing her violin. So, you know, uh, look her up. She's amazing. She's amazing. Or look up Kevin Stopper's videos, which I can't get away from now because I looked, I looked at one of them and now every other uh, thing I see is Kevin Stopper's videos of various bands of school band, which isn't bad. But I'm just saying, their algorithm. I've gotten paid at 0.1 cent. Yes, I, 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 I get attacked by algorithms. That's what happens. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody. Hey, it's been fun tonight. Yeah, nothing, nothing really harmful here. No arguments. Everybody liked each other. That's the way it should be, right? Uh, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Get, go out there and get some sun out there in sunny fucking Florida. <laughs> oh, by the way, you can't say Do that. I have to wear my T-shirt tomorrow? Woke Florida. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vernon. Always love having you here, you know. You look so comfy. Uh, 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 Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. Kevin, love having you here. Wayne, good to have you here. I should have him say, that's all, folks. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tony, thanks for being here. And Alan, love having you here. All of you, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and they're on their way out the door. 
And uh, I'm out the way out the door, too. Uh, Jack Bishop is next over most of the same station. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday for the uh, pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then again next Wednesday at 1030 right here on uh, YouTube. Uh, See you then. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody, and have a nice weekend, by the way.